Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for part 2 of this week's uh, Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update video. As always, sponsored by Trefoil.be and more on them later. So, we're going to start off here on Big Rid. This is uh, the planet Mark's been out messing around on and he's been playing around with all of the Vita Melange processing. So as we saw last week, he has a system down here that, gener that uh, brings in the, the crushed, crushes it, turns it into the... Um, Oh, extract, what well, these things will bloom the blooms and then the blooms into the spice and very small amounts of the um, of the extract. Now then we reckon we're going to need the next stage along which is the extract over here. So I was talking about this last time because I went oh look he's, uh, he's not he's not done that step yet. So now he's dropped in a large area here and this is going to be taking in, it's doing the standard Covrex-ish kind of loop systems because if we look at this recipe here you can see it takes in a huge amount of the uh, of the spice and a tiny amount of the extract and produces a bit less of the spice and a, and quite a bit more of the extract. So the idea being that using this you can essentially turn 10 of your Vitamelange spices into an additional 3 to 7 so maybe sort of 5 or 6 of the extracts. And so the way you set this up is it's, it's quite it's, it's nice and straightforward. I mean, we know there's going to be loads and loads of the extract flowing up this belt when uh, when it's working because at the absolute least you're going to be producing four times as much as you need for the next step. So all he needs along here is some inserters to grab it as it goes past and chuck it back in. So he can put, pump out all of the extract here. It'll go onto the belt and be taken away. The um, the excess uh, spice will just pour out of here because we've got filters set up on these loaders. It'll go round back in again to be turned into the to, to be reused for the next the next time that the system runs. And we're prioritising the input from this side so that we know we're always going to keep pulling it out of these out of these machines to make sure it gets used up and it doesn't it doesn't back up a backlog. However. It turns out that if we look at the extract, uh, that's this stuff here, um, it turns out apparently you can't put this into uh, delivery cannons, uh, which is a bit of a shame. So for now, until we manage to advance to, well basically until we get spaceships, there's nothing we can do with this stuff here. Um, well, that's not quite true. We could put it into a rocket, as Mark is sort of threatening to do here. But I, as I've said before, we are sort of trying to minimise the number of rockets we use. Well, because the main reason is because I don't want, to, I didn't want to have to deal with the hassle of shipping out um, rocket parts and capsules out to everywhere to make sure there was always enough rockets to, sh to ship the goodies around. So um, making delivery cannon capsules on site seemed seemed easier at the, initially because we could use this system to make them. And also, early on in the game, rockets are actually quite a bit more expensive than delivery cannon capsules. They get cheaper in the long run when you start to develop, um, the, when you start to do the do the uh, rocket uh, re reuse researches. But early on, the rocket we have a research we have a reuse stat at the moment of only 32%, and it's not until you get above about I think it was about 50%. That's the point when rockets become cheaper than uh, delivery cannon capsules on a per stack basis, and that and I think that stat didn't even include the fuel that the rockets use. So there's quite a lot of things to worry about here. So um, yeah, Mark has also had to put in a rocket fuel production system somewhere. I'm just following a long, long, long pipe. Oh, here it is over here. Um, yeah, so he's producing. He, oh, he's bringing rocket fuel in by rocket, and then and then turning it into the liquid rocket fuel here. So this is going to be an awkward system to use. So ideally, we'd prefer not to be do not to be doing this if we can avoid it. The advantage, though, is that. Um, if we look at these the, the numbers over here again, you'll see that every, every it takes ten Vitamelange spice to produce three to seven Vitamelange extract. So you are condensing it down a bit with the shipping. And oh and you need oh and you produce a little bit of light oil as well. Mm. And we can also put productivity modules in the machines over here. So in general it is better to produce things on planet, as I've said before, but in this particular case Maybe we won't do that just yet. We shall see. It may also be that we don't need the extract for a couple of stages of the uh, biological sciences, and by that time we will have spaceships to bring it all over. But we shall see. So I'm now going to turn this whole system on by flipping this belt over here that's been putting the brakes on it all. That'll get everything running. I'll give it a moment to run through. And in fact, we'll, we'll watch it, but, but I'll speed this all up so you can see, see, it, see it all running and see it all, all passing through all of the machines, getting everything running, and then we'll have another look at the... Um, at the extract stage of the uh, production system because I think it would be interesting to have a look at that and, and, and watch it running. And here we go, we're starting to get a bit of activity from these machines now. So as you can, uh, let's watch one of these to see when it's going to finish. Are you, are you 
Are you running? You're running. So there we go. This one's about to finish. And when it does, it pours out all of the uh, the, the spice back out. To, most of it flows back straight back into the machine again, although some of it gets bypassed. And then up here we have the uh, the extract coming out, and little bits of it will get grabbed by the uh, by the machine by the inserters as it goes past. But eventually we'll get a steady a nice steady flow of the uh, of the spice coming in at the bottom here. It'll flow into all these machines, and we'll have them all running and producing at least at least a bit of a trickle of the of the extract on the output and i think once the system down here gets fully up to speed and we're producing the uh the bloom and therefore the spice and so on everything as fast as we possibly can at that point then we'll start to get a decent amount of the uh, amount of the spice flowing in up here and these machines should start to run a bit more a bit more constantly so this is the system i was talking about where we're now we're now producing the uh, the vitamin lange extract but at the moment, all we can really do with it is feed it into a rocket because we don't have the facilities to uh, transport it any other way. Which is, you know, a bit of a shame, but we'll uh, <laughs> we'll get there eventually. So that's not the only thing that Mark has been doing on this planet. His other th other things he's been doing has been to expand out the amount of area he's covered and made safe to come all the way out to here. So this is an absolutely enormous area. He's been very, very busy with the uh, nuclear artillery, as you can tell by the sort of the, the scorches are all over the place. And also with putting out the... Um, a system or in, in a huge roboport system covering basically the entire area he's um, he, he he's made safe so if we look at the cabling well you can see, you can you can see a, at a bit of a glance he's, he's not covered the entire place but he's also he has built out enormous areas of roboport coverage and it's all and it's gone out to all of these um all of, all of these core seams so this is going to give him a huge amount of space to uh, to send tra send presumably send trains out to gra go out and grab all the core chunks and just start mining everything up a little bit more effectively from all of these core, core seams and then we're going to have enormous amounts of the vitamin lange core chunks available to pump into the system over here and just keep all of these machines running so yes this is <clears throat> enormously future proofed we're going to have a lot we're going to have a lot of vitamin lange available here but then based on my experience with this game in the past we are going to need an enormous amount of vitamin lange as well so it's a good thing he's built it up this big. It's a little, um, possibly getting a little bit ahead of himself, but, you know, that just means we won't, we won't need to come back here and do the expansion later. So, from that point of view, I'd say that's a really good thing. Uh, he says he's connected the filter line to power expansion. Oh, so presumably that means he's put in more, uh, he's got his filters being pumped through all the way through here and then through the power expansion up here. So he's expanded out for more power because he knows he's going to need it for all of the drills he's going to be putting out there. Um, he's got filters running out to the drills here. Presumably he's going to have the tr maybe the trains that go out to pick up the uh, core fragments over here are going to re replenish the, uh, the, the filters as well to keep, every to keep everything clean. He did also hint that one of the things he's considering is just to make the entire planet safe by wiping out every single biter on the planet, uh, and then just go f and then not but what not worry about pollution. You can stop worrying about filters as well at that point. Uh, that's still quite some way off, even at the rate he's been expanding. It might take him ooh another two or three sessions to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've got a nice stream of the uh, of the filters coming around here, and I think I, t I touched on last time how there were a, rather too many of them, and I don't know whether this has been sorted just by leaving it until they all get used up a little bit, or whether he's gone in deliberately and cleared it, cleared it out and put some and got rid of the uh, the excess filters. But overall, this system is now working very very nicely. We've got a chest full of filters here that can go out to re replenish this belt here. Yes, there's slightly more on here. These are slightly denser than they really should be, but that's going to that that isn't enough to matter at all, and it's going to disappear. And it's going to disappear as the filters get used up very, very quickly. So it's it's, it's been sorted out completely over there. <laughs> yes, he has in fact put clearing the planet as one of his things on his to-do list. So he's uh, he's working towards that, towards making the, the entire planet completely safe. As well as that, we've got the uh, the dis the uh, systems for get for taking the um, uh, all of the. Taking all of the products from here away. Now, as you can see, we've got now this, and, and nipping back over here again for a second, you can see that now we've got we've got a good flow of the um, vitamin lange uh, uh, spice coming through here. So now these machines are running quite well. We've got a good a good flow of the uh, of the extract coming out here, and that's going up to this is this is the area over here where all of these things are being shipped out. So we're getting rid of imosite here. That's presumably all being sent over to. Um, Taishakuten, where we're processing it down into the into the into the uh, the plates and the other sort of crystals, and also keeping the sulfur for vulcanite processing. We've got a gun here that's uh, ready and ready to start firing out the uh, Vita Vita Spice, to, presumably to um, north, somewhere on Norbit's orbit. Although this is not set up to point anywhere yet, um, but eventually we'll start shooting this to Norbit's orbit so we can do science with it. Here we've got the extract being loaded into the rocket, and we've got the rocket about about a third full so far. So that's coming along. And then over here, well, one of the byproducts, and I mentioned this in the previous um, episode, one of the byproducts of the um, processing of the vitamin lunch is that we get out all of this um, uh, methane gas. So he's got a system here where it's all being collected up at the end there. 
product over here and then passed up into this system which is mixing it with cryonite that we're shipping in with um uh, shipping in uh, from the cryonite planet Dracket, where Tristan's been generating at least some cryonite, and we've we've got enough here. There's 1,400 in this in this uh, delivery cannon chest, so that's plenty for now. Uh, we're requesting sort of only requesting one at a time, so that's gone a bit nuts. But then we're turning that into the uh, cryonite slush here with the um, with uh, I, with sulfuric acid that's made from sulfur, that's made from uh, light, that's made from petroleum gas, that's made from the light oil. That's another byproduct of the system. So that's really quite efficient dealing with it like that. Um, I don't know how balanced it's going to be, but at the moment it's working well for turning turning the light oil into one of the things that we need to turn the uh, to freeze the uh, methane gas. And that means we get a little trickle of methane gas coming in here. And eventually, when it when it gets all the way up to 200, the cryonite slush will freeze it, turn it into methane ice, and it can be passed along all the way up here go, and go into here where we've made so far we've made a whole 68 of them so that's quite a dense way of using up the methane we're going to be uh, it's going to be a long time till this fills up <clears throat> And then we can also pump it into here, uh, we, we, where we can fill it, where we can then ship it out by delivery cannon, probably once again to Norbit, um, and we'll see what we can do with it over there. Because I feel like methane ice is going to be, it's going to be useful for sort of general petrochem purposes. But we shall wait and see exactly what we end up wanting to use it for. And there's a little trickle of iron coming in, probably from. Okay, I was going to say probably coming in from the overflow from from this system, but no, actually instead instead of taking it out of here. Um, where there is at least normally there's a bit of iron coming through here, although at the moment we seem to not. It seems to most just be stone and uh, rare metals at the moment. But usually we get a little bit of iron overflowing here as well, and that can be trickled over here. That could be brought over here, but instead he's put up a little iron mine in that's going to produce iron for a good long time. It also seems to be producing steel for barrels. What is um, Mark using barrels for? They're all coming down here. Ah, that's to ship the vulcanite. The uh, no, the pyroflux out. That makes perfect sense because yes, that's one of the other side effects of, of this system. It produces pyroflux, and that's not particularly useful. Even though down here, I think one of these stages. Yes, there's one of these stages in here uses vulcanite for the uh, for making the uh, the spice. But the vul you can't. Be whilst you can turn vulcanite into pyroflux, you can't do it the other way. So it's a little bit stuck there. And this is why uh, this is why we're bringing we're bringing in vulcanite but shipping out pyroflux, even though that seems slightly foolish. But, you know, you do what you got to do. So, that's been Bridget, up, up here in the only just outside Norvis. Let's carry on moving outwards. The next planet we're going to go off and have a look at is Kothar. And that has been where um, Mike has been spending his time. So, what has Mike been up to? Well... We had a we had a thing in the after the after I released the last video there've been a couple of times when I've been just looking around the map trying to find things that people have been up to and I think I, I, I there was one of uh, Mike's iridium sorry iridite mines I couldn't find now there, there, there's a mine here this might may or may not be the one that I couldn't find earlier I have no idea uh, this this might be a new one but Mike has been his ever have helpful self and has put little notes on the on the map saying things like this is a new mine to try and draw my attention to them so if I zoom out a bit further you can see that now it's basically just covered with Mike's sarcasm. Um, now, <laughs> on the one hand, it is useful because I can go, okay, yes, he's, he's put in an iridite mine here, that's nice, and he's getting the sulfuric acid of that directly from uh, no, he's, just, he's doing it through really, really long pipes because reasons. So he's got a railway. He's got a railway system over here where he's drop. Is this dropping off or picking up? This is a uh, this is a sulfuric acid drop off station. Yeah, no, no, this is a pickup station, sorry. This is a sulfuric acid pickup station, but instead of having the train then take it to where it's needed, he's just put in some really long pipes. No, I mean, that's fair enough. This isn't actually all that far away, so I guess that's okay. <laughs> But yes, he's brought he's brought that over here, and he's, he's digging up the iridite, and that means he can then have a train come in like this and pick up the iridite. It fills up really quickly because the iridite stacks to ten. That's that's horrendous. That's really really small stacks of iridite. I mean, I'd expect that sort of difficulty from Naquium, but no, apparently iridite as well. Then the train can set off where it'll come up all the way around here to. Well, let's just watch it and see where it goes. It's coming up here. Probably going to drop... Yeah, it's going to come up here to the iridite drop-off station like this. Here it comes now. It's going to turn around and stop and come back down again. So then we can drop that off into these into these warehouses here. And that means we've now got, a, as well as the sort of the, the trickle that's coming through from the uh, core fragment processing down here, which isn't a huge amount, uh, we've also got a steady stream of iridite coming through here. So we've got a one solid red belt. And that means that's keeping all of these machines quite a bit busier. They're... Um, I would say looking at the looking at the numbers here, these are probably at about 50% capacity, maybe slightly less. So we should probably maybe we could have another belt coming out of here and have this as a three to four balancer. With the, there, there are there are possibilities, but we could probably shove a bit more iridite through here before um, before the system would would be uh, would be full. And then then and then we so we've now got a nice steady flow of it coming through here into the processing. We've got a much better flow of the iridium powder coming out here, going up here to then be cooked with the blast cakes. And it looks like everything is now working, and we've got 
lots more blast cakes and we've so therefore we've got well these but these belts are now basically full so <laughs> we've got all of the um, iridium we know what to do with uh in that's interesting so this is an iridium drop-off station except it's called iridium ingot pickup um, maybe these belts are the wrong way around. There's something funny going on here. So it makes sense to have an iridium pickup station at the, where all of the um, the iridium is being produced in case we need to take it away for to use it for anything else on this planet. And it makes sense to not be filling that station up just yet because at the moment we don't need any on this planet. So you might as well just ship it out and put it into all the delivery cannons along here that are ready to ship it off to anywhere it's wanted. Like default, 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 default and Norbit. <laughs> so we've got yeah we've got we've got all these set up ready to ship it out to wherever it's required that's great um but this station is still puzzling me a little bit now either he's copied and pasted in, in a, a drop-off station instead of a pickup station or he's turned all all of the belts around completely absolutely 100 percent in order to make sure everything is um not going to feed out into the station i th i'm going with the uh i'm going with it being the wrong type of station and he's put it in as a sort of a, an afterthought or hasn't really thought it through properly but we'll find out later uh, so yes, that now means we're now getting, we're now producing much more iridium. If we have a look at the production graph again, and we search for ingots, we're going to then. This is just going to be very very embarrassing for me, but I, I imagine. Uh, look back over the last ten hours. We'll select. We won't select that ingot because that's there. We go. So I have that one and that one, and that one. Uh, yeah, those 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 are the ones we care about. We'll bring it down to the last hour. So now, as we can see, the beryllium that I'm producing is still really really slow, and this is the one I've just started to use as well. So we're going to need to improve the improve production here, I think, quite a bit. Uh, you can see actually this this orange line, and this orange line is Tristan's production going up, and the blue line is um, Mike. So let's just zoom out a bit further. Uh, yes, there we go. This is when Mike introduced his second uh, source of ir iridite. So we've got these bouncers here turning from each time a train turns up with a load of core fragments. Uh, with the base load being whatever was coming out of the drill that's just right next to it and feeding straight in. And then there's this spike up here when he suddenly had a steady stream of it coming in, from, of iridite coming in from the mine. But still with the bounces on top from the core trains coming in. So yeah, that's great. We've got, we've got, quite, we've got a lot more coming through there. Um, and also we've got Tristan's Holmium production. Again, you can see that. Oops, let's turn hours again. You can see the general sort of increase and a bit wobbly and then a nice proper increase. And actually, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. It's up and down a bit. It's hard to tell exactly what's going on there. But Tristan has been working quite hard on the Holmium, but we're going to cut touch, touch on that later. So let's go back to um, Mike's passive aggressive notes, shall we? So apparently this this um, Pyroflux production system was something he built last week. Um, I didn't see it, so he's now um, snarking at me about it. <laughs> cheeky sod uh, so yeah this is just this is as as you've probably seen before this is bringing in um uh, vulcanite that's coming in by delivery cannon we've got plenty of that it's then shipped up by belt over to here where it's mixed with sand you get pyroflux out and that's good for all of the um, all of the resource all, all of the ore processing because it means you can use better recipes in order to get more out of it and it's quite possible with the iridite because the iridite is so tough and difficult that you actually need um pyroflux to be pumped in in order to produce it at all he says he's put in a mini mall as well. That might be the uh, the this is this is new down here. Yeah, so he's got a mall down here. So so um, in the interests of sort of making the planet future proofed and, and meaning he won't have to go back it back there again when other things run out. He's got a system out here that's making things like uh, stack inserters in huge quantities. Three mach three machines making those is possibly excessive, um, but also lots of all, all the other inserters in order to make those. He's not making any of the filter stuff, the filter inserters. So that's um, possibly an oversight. Uh, then what else is he making? All of, wow, all of this I think is just to make the uh, the inserters. Then down here we've got some red belts, uh, yellow and red belts being made. That's good because that means next time I'm trying to go somewhere, I might find that Mike hasn't stolen all of the belts, so that's good. <laughs> then up here we're making we're making green circuits, probably for the belts as well. Logistics chests. He's, he's been pretty thorough here actually. Um, assembly machines as well, up to assembly machine twos. Um, that's. That's, that's pretty thorough. I mean, that is enough to bootstrap a fairly significant amount of base stuff. Uh, there's no chemical processing stuff, but I guess he doesn't actually need that anywhere around here. Um, yeah, that's that seems to be fairly complete. He's got he's got he's got a good feed of copper, iron, steel, and stone coming in over here. The st um, yeah, I, this this seems to be, he seems to be trying to make this uh, planet as self-sufficient as possible. Which uh, I mean, I have to admit, I'm 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 a fan of that in general. I think that that's a good plan. It means that uh, if 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 a if there's a um, I don't know a coronal mass ejection or a meteor strike that somehow gets past all of the defences over over here, um, then there's going to be all of the resources need well most of the resources anyway needed to do, do rebuilding and with quite a lot with this mall area he's there's, there's, he's going to be able to re then if he's desperate he may well be able to reproduce a lot of the other things that are going to be needed and also also a lot of the buildings he's going to be needed there's probably got spares of them over here as well so in general this means that. 
quite possibly. We, he's just sort of protecting this area against having to go back here again later. He's put in another copper mine in order to presumably to feed the mall over here. There'll be a stone mine up here that we've he's had that for a while. That's that's fine. There's apparently there's a new barrel system over here. So he's all oh, right. He's he's yes he's taking the barrels in for, after making the um uh do it dealing with the uh, bringing in the the uh, mineral water which is still horrible but I mean that actually is it's not his fault it's horrible it's because there's no mineral water on the planet so there's only so far you can go with it. But then the barrels are coming down here presumably to be crushed down in. Oh yeah, the machines here. Sorry, six machines crushing them. That's, that seems excessive, but sure. Um, Mike does like building on scale. I've noticed that's why we only have 35 UPS left. Uh, and then it trick. There, yeah, that all comes down here. It goes into the steel pickup station and no steel drop off station, and can then be fed down onto onto his mall as well. So yeah, that'll probably work. The only the only slight risk here is I don't know if there's anything else using the steel. So there is a, there's a small risk that he's going to be. Um, Unless he's building stuff down here enough to use up the steel, eventually all of these warehouses are going to fill up. But I think that's going to be a very, very long time. I'm not seriously worried about that. He's also put in another power area down here. So this one with the uh, the black lightning bolt is not new, but he's put in a new row along the bottom here. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 some, and some fresh sarcasm as well, of course. Uh, he's What's he doing about pollution with these? Um, is he just... Yeah, okay. So he's, he's, just, he's just letting the inside area get as polluted as it wants and then cleaning it all up around the outside. But oh, no, no, I take that back. It's being cleaned up along the middle here as well a bit. So, yeah, there's, there's pollution cleaning happening... Um, in general, but most, mostly he's just making sure it doesn't get outside his corner of the planet. I think that covers everything except he did mention, there's a, he mentioned there's a copper smeltery as well, so I should point that out, otherwise he'll be rude again. Um, <laughs> he's gone all in with the copper smelting, actually. I'm quite impressed. He's Even though it's just an outpost planet that isn't expected to use very much copper, he's still done the enrichment and the and then turned that into copper. He hasn't gone through the um, the molten copper stage, but he has at least enriched it first, um, which it, because that only, only requires sulfuric acid, which he's got anyway. So I suppose it's probably not a huge amount of extra... Um, work required to make it. Although well, he does have an emergency one over here that will produce the copper even if he runs out of um, out of acid. <laughs> okay, well that I think unless anyone can see anywhere else where there's uh, where there's snarky comments left on the map, I think we were I think we're done with Mike for now. Uh, much much to the uh, benefit of my sanity. So let's head back. Let's head that like, a little bit further out. There's nothing to say about Talos. Um, I don't think uh, it's still producing beryllium. I talked about it a little bit yesterday, but basically it's still producing beryllium, but not very fast. Kothar we're on Taros. Taros, no, we've not gone there yet. Njord. Njord is the next place. And this is where Tristan is producing large quantities of holmium. As you can see, we've now this belt is full along here and down here and down here and down here. And yeah, basically everything is now, it looks like everything is now just completely backed up with the holmium. So he's got a couple of choices here. One is just to let the system stop, which is what he's done. And it's probably, to be honest, is the sensible one. It's not quite backed up all the way down here yet, um, but he's got plenty of it. One is just to, to let it build up and build up and build up and say, okay, we're full of that'll do, uh, which is what he's done. And I think that's the sensible thing. The other option would be to put in a warehouse to stockpile a load of it. But this belt is so long that um, hopefully we'll have we'll notice that the uh, we'll, we're using it all up uh, before it, before it all gets used up and be able to bump the uh, bump the production if required. But uh, hopefully we won't actually need to because I, I think this this system here is sufficiently large that I'm hoping this is going to produce enough holmium until the end of the game. Um, and I don't say that sort of thing lightly. But yeah, there's a lot of it. He's been adding in more core miners, so as you can see now, they've got the got these rails snaking across the <laughs> most of the planet and going out to lots and lots of different core mine, core seams, uh, digging up core fragments from there. So he's got a lot of core fragments coming in. It'd be interesting to see what sort of proportions we seem we feel like we're on. So we've got um, this is oh actually yes, it looks like oh no these are, these are about to empty. Okay, <laughs> so. A lot of it is core fragments, but also it's not quite a hundred. Well, I don't know actually. We, the, we, we shall see. It doesn't look like the machines are actually running out. There is there is a bottleneck somewhere else by the look of it. Ah yes, the bottleneck is still on the, um, the production of the uh, the anion beads. So we're uh, yes, we are we are bringing in enough core fragments to keep everything satisfied, and we're not using any of the uh, the holmanite that's being mined up straight out of the out of the, out of the holmanite mines. That's only because the limiting factor is, is these is these anion an exchange beads, which are yeah, flowing in here at a, a rate, but not a sufficient rate. So they, I mean, they get down about this far, roughly, which, as you can see, is <laughs> is less than a quarter of the required throughput. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so that's yeah, it's been a little bit a little overbuilt, should we say? Um, 
so we need yeah we need to get a lot more anion exchange beads in here and did we decide the limiting factor over here was cryonite or was it nitric acid last time it was nitric acid and it still is so yeah this nitric nitric acid over here we are actually this pipe is full um even though this pipe is empty which is interesting is there another supply of it then No, I think it just happens to be sort of on that cusp where there's a tiny bit coming through here and it's just about keeping these pipes full. Or maybe it's not being used up quite as quickly as I would... I don't know. Um, but also we are very, very short of cryonite. So if we're going to speed this up, basically we just need to drop a lot more cryonite in. And then when we do that, we'll have a lot more uh, anion exchange bees being made and we'll be able to have a lot more holmium. Um, and all of, the, all of the infrastructure is there in place already. So literally all we need to do is improve the cryonite production and boom, the holmium, holmium will, uh, will, will boost as well. Um, he says he, he did say he's oh right yes looking at his notes he says he's doubled the rate he's producing nitric acid at um, but he's yeah as I said state is still short of cryonite which is why probably why this is full I'm still a little perplexed by the um, by this pipe being essentially full and this pipe being essentially empty but it must just be that it's just fast enough coming through there that's feels weird and slightly uncomfortable and is why I keep looking around here to see if there's any other pipes feeding a bit more nitric acid in but it I don't see any. Um. Oh wait, what's going on down here? Nope, I take it back. It's being fed in from down here. I'm, I'm just blind. So we're making lots more of it here, and it's being pumped straight in here from here. So down here, as you can see, we've got we're full of nitric acid, and it's coming out. Okay, right there we go. I'm, um, I'm just blind, and uh, and the the the. Uh, the answer, the answer is really, really obvious when I finally look in the right place. So yes, this is this is producing nitric acid nice and quickly and keeping the system fully satisfied. That's basically it for Njord by the looks of it. Uh, Tristan was also fairly busy on Norvis as, uh, as well as I said last time. He's also done a little bit of fiddling around on Dracket and I should have mentioned this earlier. He said, oh, he says Mark's put down some more mines or product productivity modules, and we've needed to send out another rocket to provide all the stuff that's required. So yeah, we've got the we've got all the core mines feeding in. Uh, it doesn't. Oh yes, and then there's a cryonite mine down here, uh, pulling up cryonite, straight cryonite ore, in the way you're you're used to from all the other things we've been seeing. And then so we've got along here, presumably. How is this prioritised? I'm I'm sort of assuming he's going to be prioritising what's coming in from the from the core fragments because that's how we roll. Uh, that's coming in here as we'd expect, and then so that those are coming along here to a separate set of crushers. That's that's fine. Uh, comes along here. Oh yeah, here we go. There's there's a um, there's a, a splitter here that's uh, prioritising the input from this direction. So we'll be using we'll be using this cryonite first, although it's not side balanced, um, and this is all dumping down onto the and and this machine is dumping down to the top side. This is a bit of a tangle, if I'm being honest. Um, but it does seem that all of the all of the cryonite that's coming out of all of these other machines is getting used. Um, it's just it's just them being topped up a little bit by this one, uh, at least for the machines over here. Okay, so that's that's going to have increased the cryonite rate a little bit. Let's have a look at the productivity production graph again because that's always interesting to see. So over the last ten hours, the cryonite production has. Okay, so we, we this this was our base rate. I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, zoom out further. Yeah, this looks like this was the base rate from the uh, production from 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 the core mines we had. This has bounced up and down a bit. Maybe this was because we weren't using it. That's going to be my guess, or because there's something wrong with it. It's hard to say. Uh, but it's now we've now bumped it up this far. So we've gone from 125 to 190 per minute. So that's a bit of a that is a, is a significant increase and is is what and is going to help quite a bit. But if we want to get the holmium plant running absolutely flat out, we're going to need to bump that up even further. Still, it does seem to be generally working. And now that we've covered all of the uh, different pro different materials we're producing, which is is a lot of them, we've got the uh, as you've seen, we've got the um, imasite being processed on Taishaguten and a bit of vulcanite coming from there, cryonite from Dracket, everything going on on Norvis as always. Uh, Bridget is producing the uh, Vitamelange. We've got uh, Kothar producing the Iridium. Taras, I think, is going to be uh, Talos is producing. Talos is producing the beryllium. Taras is going to be producing imasite later when we need it. Njord is producing the holmium. And we haven't needed to go any further out than that yet. So that's produced all of the different exotic resources. And then we're just bring, basically bringing most of those into Norvis orbit. Where, where eventually we're going to start doing the science. So this stage of the um, the run means we're now going to start looking at the um, at the death counters. And as you can see from the uh, list here, nobody, has, nobody died in the last stream. So we're, um, despite all of Mark's... Uh, Expansion. All, the only the only deaths there were, for, were to bite were were biter deaths. Uh, he managed to not, not die at all. The nuclear artillery is safer than it sounds. Um, yeah, so that that's gone very very well. No extra, nothing extra to report there. 
And so that brings us on to considerations of things to do next time. Well, I think uh, Tristan is probably more or less has had enough about enough of Njord at this point, and I think he's going to be saying he's going to be he heading off to uh, to pastures new, or at least working on pastures new. Uh, the only thing that Njord needs at this point is more cryonite, and so I think the infrastructure there is all built up and re and, and probably probably finished. But we'll leave that up to him. Mike is probably finished with Kothar because he's got lots of iridium there and it's being produced at a good rate, so that's nice. Although may, we, we could we could increase that relatively easily if we wanted to, but at the moment it's probably fine. Uh, Mark says he's more or less done with uh, Bridget. I think he, he was talking about going off somewhere else in, in a future episode. So there was consideration that we might have him go out to Talos and improve the uh, beryllium production because now now that I'm starting to use that in Norvis orbit, the sort of the, the proof of concept I built up when I went out there will probably soon stop being enough but you know it'll it'll last for a little while so we'll, we'll see we'll see when it becomes a problem i'm going to stick in Norvis orbit and carry on building up science there and we'll see if anyone else comes out to join me i know that tristan wants to start work on energy science there and um and if mike's not doing anything else maybe he'll come over and do the material science i don't know we're uh, we are very we do seem to be sticking with our colors here which is um entertaining and not actually deliberate so that's going to be happening on Monday. Uh, come along to the stream then, Monday evening, 7.30pm UK time, to, uh, to watch us getting on with that and trying to, trying to expand out and improve everything and uh, just generally do more science. Uh, then on Wednesday there'll be another um, XCOM stream because that's going really well at the moment. I only lost um, about eight soldiers last time so that was possibly a new record and one of those was just a one really really unlucky mission and uh, well it was partly bad luck and it was partly uh, bad tactics i've and i i learned and when i did another mission the same uh, slightly later on it went much more safely for my soldiers <laughs> so come along ha enjoy that and put your name in the hat for a for a soldier and uh, see if you get killed <laughs> that's some good advertising on Tuesday, there will be hopefully a DIY video coming out for supporters. It's nearly finished at the moment, so I think I should be able to get it done, polished off over the weekend. Um, that should be should be should be ready then for for you. So if you're a supporter, come you, you can watch that. If you're not a supporter, head over to uh, ko-fi.com slash lawrenceblaze, drop in a donation, and then come onto the Discord and let us know, and we'll make sure you get access to everything. Or I suppose if you if you can't do that, you can you can always wait a week, and then you'll get the um, get it the the the, the, uh, the week after as, as, a, as a standard um, normal release video. And there probably should be GTA video videos on Thursdays as normal with the standard uh, release early re releasing a week early for supporters finally please check out the channel sponsor that's tree4.be they will host a server for you for things like minecraft factorio and so on you can see the games on screen here they're very reasonable and if you use the code lawrence plays on checkout you'll get 20 percent off your first month which makes them even more reasonable so heh, no reasons not to there and so that brings me to the end of the video. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you've got this far through it, then I'm sure you have. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.